Hey friends, Shane from HunterInch.com, and I, I want to show you a quick little tip uh, that relates to brakes. Uh, I'm finishing up the RC51, it's actually going to a, a new owner, and this is, a, this is a project that we built with students over a couple year uh, deal, and I recently just did a brake job that uh, on a customer's bike that came in that was complaining about they just had a brake job done. And I was in a hurry and I didn't have a chance to video it. So I thought while I had this one apart, I'm going to show you what you could do wrong uh, on doing brake pads yourself. So it's a super important little tip. So hit that subscribe button, grab your little popcorn, and let's do this. If you hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, you're going to be missing out on videos and free prizes and raffles we have coming up. All right, so your, your brake pads, when you have a single piston, okay, like this one, where it doesn't push on both sides. You can see it just pushes on one side, okay? So as as you apply the brakes on a design like this, let me see if I can do this out the light first. Okay, when you when you apply the brake on a design like this, this this pad stays stationary to the back side of the rotor, and this one needs to be able to uh, move in, grab the rotor, and then create the clamp, right? So what I want you to notice here is there's this little plate in here. Let's try and uh, zoom in and look at that. So what I want us to focus on is these two little tabs right here, okay? Let me go ahead and just even pull that out of there. Okay, so this spring retainer, what this does is help. Some, sometimes you'll hear people reference as an anti-rattle spring or whatnot, but it applies just a little bit of tension on the pad so that they don't wear out that pin as they slide back and forth across here. That's why dirt bikes are, you always get like divots. It's real common to replace these pins on like off-road vehicles, okay? So, like I said, what this does just puts that little bit of tension. It presses on the top of the brake pads there. And what's important about this one is, it, look at it. It has a little tiny retainer right there, okay, for the back pad. Well, that customer bike that came in the other day, what happened was this was in this position, okay. It was a brand new brake job, okay. This will fit in here either way. So, you know... Mechanic does the job, puts this together, maybe this fell out, they flipped it around, whatever. And what happens is as soon as the customer starts to uh, use the bike, the, the, the caliper, when it pushes on that brake pad, when you let off, it lets off ever so slightly. If you haven't seen my video, I'll put a link below to where I did a cutaway on a caliper and actually show how the seal works in here to pull the piston back. You know what, I'm just gonna drop a little clip See of it in. You know, this is actually here. one of my favorite yeah. videos ever made. So watch what happens when so I huge. just move the piston. Do you see the bottom of it pulls over? Okay, so that's you applying the brake. That means back here is all the brake fluid that's pushing that out. And when you let go of the lever, okay, and you don't have the pressure on there anymore, look what happens. But do you see how the, the seal wants to relax? back to that square position yep awesome man been... but what happened was that they just kept going eh, a little noisy and by the time they got back to the mechanic uh you know apparently they didn't want to mess with it or didn't want to take any claim to it but what it did is it, it ruined this clip it bent these little tabs over and so on so when you look at anything like this doesn't matter if it's a honda harley suzuki kawasaki any of that doesn't matter it breaks a break in this case this little guy needs to sit in there let me get it set up in here. It needs to sit in such a way that this, I'll get this one out of the way, that this one pad, okay, is going to just, like I said, stay stationary. And then the other one has the ability to slide all the way across that. So if we get a side shot here, it's pretty evident. Let me, re, uh, let me rotate the camera. So as you can see, when that is in there correctly, that's going to sit on there. And that little ear right there, see if I can get the sit in place just puts a little bit of pressure on there holds it right in place and that one doesn't move all right my friends there you have it a uh, quick little tip if you're doing your own brakes what you need to know is there's the devil's in the details you want to do a couple different things if you're going to be doing brake jobs yourself number one subscribe to the youtube channel look and see if we have a video on doing brakes that are your model or even similar and then the other thing i cannot stress enough is to make sure 
that you are using a service manual so you can get torque specs, figure out what you need to do. Another thing I love to do when I'm working on something is go ahead and have the parts fish just up and waiting for that model. That way, if I want to, you know, look at something, see if maybe I'm concerned a part's missing or whatnot, I can grab that fish, take a look at it, and uh, figure out what I need to do. But HowToRinse.com. You can hook up with us if you need one-on-one -on -one help. Otherwise, we'd love if you'd uh, join the channel and support us for uh, all the content we make. But as always, my friends, I'm going to keep at it. So make it a great day and keep wrenching.